as Eric said, I'm Jiru Bilamoria, and I'm here to talk to you about Global Money Week, which is an idea in its infancy. This is the second year for the Global Money Week, and it is being run by my organization where Eric actually started in his first year with Adriana, where's Adriana? So the two of them came and they helped take it off. And since then, actually, we've had, I think, 10 students from IE Business School. So that's quite a bit. And I'm sure we'll keep having more and more. Child and Youth Finance International, money for children and young people? What gave me that idea? For that, I want to take you all back to 15 years ago when I used to work with young people, with street children on the streets. I used to be with them, I used to be working with them. Many of them were on the streets alone, some were as young as eight and nine years, some were 15 or 16. And all of them used to manage to survive on their own, not through begging, but through rack picking, through working on marriages, the older ones, you know, cleaning dishes, etc. cetera. Uh, some had their own small enterprises. The funny thing was not a single one of them saved, and I couldn't understand it. Because 15 years back, they could make 100 of 150, 200 rupees. That is around three or four euros, which in India is quite a bit. And at the end of the day, they'd have the money, they'd go out, they'd spend it. And I kept wondering, why did they do that? So I would ask them, and they'd say, Didi, don't bother us. You know, Didi, ah, that's what we like doing. That's the spirit of Bindas. That's what fun is about. So don't tell us anything. And I'd say, no, let's try to think, let was it. And then as I kept talking to them, I realized one very important thing. All of them spent their money because they didn't have a place to save it. And those of who had tried to save it, huh, their money had been taken away, it had been cheated. Because they would, you know, they'd give it with the local money lender, with the person where they had sold rack picking, the person would say no, and that was the reason. And I said, why don't you try to open a bank account? Of course, no bank was willing to open a bank account for them. Minors, not possible. Children don't know. So that's what sort of got the idea for Child and Youth Finance International. That was like, or Child and Youth Finance in India. Having children learn about money, get them to save, because then they have a life. They have a choice. And that's what we wanted to do. So we started getting some of those children to open bank accounts. I'm happy to say a few of them actually have their own thriving businesses. And the first boy whose bank account I opened has now an electrical business with four people working for him. So I think that's the power of the ability to save, the ability to know about money, and the ability to believe in yourself. That's what Child and Youth Finance is doing. And Global Money Week is saying we need to highlight this. Just as TEDx talks have an idea which you need to take to the world, Global Money Week is saying, teach children, teach young people about money, take it across the world, and then we will be able to bring about change. We will be able to end poverty, we would be able to restructure finance, and hopefully we won't have a generation in a financial crisis. That's what's going to make the difference. And that's by believing in young people and believing in change. So last year, we started Global Money Week. We had 26 countries and a few thousand kids. Today, 80 countries are joining us. 180 organizations, 50 government bodies, central banks, etc., And over a million young people and children across the world are saying, we are going to know about what we are doing, about money, about the very concepts I told you about. So let me tell you in more detail what the children are doing through this week. It started yesterday, 15th March. It ends on 21st March. So I'm going to tell you what the young people are doing. But more important, I'm going to tell you what will this week achieve? What is the change in the life of every child? Every young people, like for my street children, what is the change it is going to achieve? The first thing, children are going to have a smile on their face. It's a small thing, but I think it's the most important. Because when you believe in yourself, when you're happy, you're going to be able to bring about the change. That's what we're going to do. Make children enjoy through the week and say life is a journey of enjoyment. It's a perspective. 
we're going to talk about diversity. We have, I think, 50 Skype calls planned. And today morning, I just got an email where I had children from Germany talking to children in Tanzania. They didn't even know where the countries were on the map. So they were first looking at the map and through Skype talking. And what a euro can buy is very different from what a euro can buy or the same amount can buy in Tanzania. So they were talking about different currencies, different things. This is a drawing done by kids at our youth summit last year, where they said, we never knew there were so many currencies. It's so important to know about diversity in the world because as the future is happening, everything is changing and the world is going to be a global village. So this is what we do. Believe in yourself, the first thing. The second is learn that there is a world out there because when you know there's a world out there, you know there's a choice, there's a future. This is young children across the world, at, uh, no, it's just a school in Moldova, where the young children are preparing for their Global Money Week. And they are going to work with the central bank, they are going to talk to the central bank, and they are going to see how Moldova can make sure that every child over there can have a savings account and learns about money by the time they are 18. So this is what is happening. And this is a young girl from Uganda, no, sorry, Nigeria, and she's going to pra practice because she's speaking to the governor of her central bank who has created a national strategy in Tanzania that every child graduating from school will know about money and every child should have a bank account. And she's going to ask him, what are you going to do to make it a reality? Because strategies are great, but what you need is practice. So this is happening because we have helped the children and children have actually come up with ideas themselves to us and said, this is how we see our future. Let us try to make it happen. So these are just a few things and this is what they're doing, as I said, in the 80 countries across the world. A very big emphasis is learning to save money. You all are used to ATMs and banks, right? And you go to the corner and you withdraw the money and you have what you need. Well, in rural parts of India, where I come from, in many rural parts in the world, there is no banks. 95% of the young people in the world do not have access to a savings account. And if you don't have that, and if you're not part of the mainstream financial system, how are you going to be able to go ahead? So this is an informal bank where children are collecting money, and saving and learning how to save through a flatoon, another organization of mine. And now, this is another part where they are doing the same. But now, through Global Money Week, they are going to the central bankers and saying, informal banking is great, but we need to be part of mainstream banking. Because what's going to happen? If they keep on informal structures, they are not going to have credit or access to credit in the future, they are not going to be able to buy their houses, they are not going to be part of the mainstream financial system. That means poverty is something which will continue the intergenerational cycle. So we are saying, start serving and saving, and then let's move to having your own bank account. When they do that, I know say Spain is going through a financial crisis, everything is happening, but at the same time, you have access to credit, which is at a much cheaper rate, than a rural child, or rather their parents have. In rural India, in rural Philippines, in rural everywhere, access to credit is 15, 20, 25%. Microfinance organizations in some parts charge 100%. Do we pay that? No. If we start including these young kids in the formal financial system, they will have the same opportunities that we have. And that's what Global Money Week is talking about. And the last aspect that Global Money Week talks about is dreams. Dreams to change the world. Dreams to say, I can go beyond. I'm going to pause here and say, last year we had a summit, and we had a young girl from Uganda who came to our summit. She was with an organization, she was sponsored, she was living in a community. She wasn't sure she would be able to continue studying. So what did she do? She actually, after the summit, went home and started her own enterprise of selling slippers. And by selling those slippers, she stayed on in school and made sure that her siblings could also stay on. 
Another story. As you can see, these are kids rag picking. We had a young girl who has basically, what she did with her friends is started rag picking, or as you see, collecting waste, recycling it, something we talk about a lot, saved the money and started her own candy store. She did this with her friends, so now she and a few of her friends are able to stay in school. Or the last, which I love is my favorite, we had this girl from South Africa who came, and guess what she did? She wanted to be a photographer. She lived in a slum. Everyone said, that's impossible. But she said, I went to the youth summit for child and youth finance, and they said that if you save, if you start an enterprise, if you learn about money, you should have a choice, you should have a dream. And my dream is to be a photographer. I want to do that. Everyone told her flat no. But she continued because she'd got this power and she thought she could do it. And she then went ahead and she started her own enterprise doing lots of small things like taking things, selling them, different things. She saved enough money to pay for her admission from her own money, because everyone else was saying it was not possible, from her own money to do photography. She's photographing, and she's going to come to our summit this year, most probably, and shoot photographs for us through the summit, because she could do her dream. That's what Global Money Week is about. It's about dreams. It's about starting things. It's about taking charge. It's about what Eric and his friends have done over here, getting TEDx to IE. It's about different things. And the last thing it is about is making sure policy happens. So yesterday, there was a group of IE students who spoke to the head of UNCDF. And they said, these are some of the policy changes. They were not alone, of course. They were speaking from children with Togo, from South Africa, from England, and a few other countries. I'm forgetting now. And they asked him for policy change. And he said, I'm really going to think about how UNCDF can bring about much more inclusive finance. So this is what's going to happen as part of a week. And I has taken part in it. On Monday, Mr. Mark Bishler is coming with me to NASDAQ during the opening bell. And that's how we are getting the corporate sector involved, different companies involved, so that they can be part of this week. Because when you ring the NASDAQ bell, not only do company stock prices go up, a lot of companies start getting knowledge about the week. And they say, how can we contribute? What can we do? So that is what we have to look at. Change is a slow process. It's one child at a time. It's one person at a time, one policy change at a time. Global Money Week through Child and Youth Finance is going to be doing that because we believe in children. We believe in young kids with technology. We are saying maybe that's the future. Let's look at technology to take it through. So far, we have reached 18 million children across the world, but there are a billion to go. And those billion will only be reached with the support of every one of you. So my suggestion is join this week, be part of it, and you yourself can be the change. Because I'm sure every one of you over here has the story to be the change, to make change possible in this world, and be part of the Global Money Week. Thank you very much.